Hi there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Recently, one of our fans, Zach Schmidt, sent me a message asking me to do a breakdown of his second favorite ship, the Ghost. Now, I just kind of want to know what his favorite ship is. But anyway, the Ghost is definitely a ship deserving of a breakdown. It fits one of my favorite niches in Starship design. It's what I like to call a hub ship in honor of those old Bioware games like Kotar, where you had one ship, like the Ebon Hawk, and you and your whole crew lived out of it and journeyed across the galaxy together, solving crimes and murdering younglings. Anyway, guys, let's take a look at the ghosts. Also, if you guys want your questions to be answered on this channel, like us or follow us on Facebook and send us a message with your video idea. When it comes to buying your first Starship, it can be pretty confusing because there's like a galaxy full of brands. I mean, you have your heavy hitters like uh, Quad Systems Engineering and Senior Fleet Systems, and then maybe you have some more exotic brands like uh, Slain and Corpus. Each manufacturer and each system has its own unique flair when it comes to ship design, and there are plenty of pros and cons that you should weigh before you buy these ships. Now, if you're the kind of spacer who likes to buy a cheaper, more affordable ship and then customize it, I suggest you look no further than Carillion Engineering Corporation. Why? Well, first, Carillion Engineering Corporation is famous for designing very modular ships that usually have a massive aftermarket for parts and upgrades. You have famous designs like the YT-1300, which was the base model for the Millennium Falcon, and then you have the VC-X100 light freighter, which is what the ghost is. We see throughout the entire Rebel series that the VCX100 model, like most Karelian ships, is both extremely rugged and reliable, especially considering the fact that they are designed for civilian use. Why are Karelian Engineering's putting so much effort on designing very tough and rugged and reliable ships? Well, it could be because Corelli has always been famous for its explorers, wanderers, pioneers, and smugglers. Before the advent of space travel, Corellian sailors voyaged across the vast seas of Corellia searching for fish and treasure. In the old Republic days, before the first hyperdrives were created, Corellian adventurers were amongst the first to leave the core region of the galaxy and explore the rest of the galaxy. Corellian scouts would establish many of the major hyperspace lanes that would connect Republic worlds to one another. So Corellia has always had a very healthy, domestic-driven market for starships. Smaller starships that are affordable for individual pilots, but still very rugged and able to survive the most extreme adventures. It's kind of perfect. Now, unlike the other Corellian ship that we mentioned, the Millennium Falcon, the VC-X100's internal layout is relatively simple. Instead of a confusing circular hub slash living room area, the Ghost has a more simple cross-shaped design. The cockpit is located at the fore of the ship and not off-center, like the Millennium Falcons. The cockpit is lined up with the cargo bay in the aft, along with crew quarters and service quarters lining the central quarter. I know this sounds like a trivial thing, but when you're in the middle of a firefight and you're running from the blaster turret to the engine room, which is on fire, and you have to put out that fire, it pays to have a simplified design that makes maximum use of the space. Although it was only 43 meters in length, the Ghost was large enough to have four separate cargo bays and also large enough to house the entire Spectre Rebel cell and all of their weapons and supplies. And the ship was large enough to also sustain operations for an extended period of time. Now, there is a corridor that intersects the main corridor, which runs from cockpit to aft, and this corridor goes from wingtip to wingtip, and it actually is flanked on both sides by docking hatches. This is a pretty unique feature for a ship of this class and allow the Ghost to dock with larger ships, but also at the same time let other smaller ships dock with it. In the earlier years of the war, Phoenix Squadron was mostly on the move and lacking any real carrier type ship, so for the most part, Phoenix Squadron's A-Wings had to dock with smaller corvettes and freighters, like the Ghost. Now, A-Wings are hyperdrive equipped, but you know, you, you can't really live inside the cockpit of that cram thing. You eventually have to get out sometimes. So having something like the Ghost that was relatively small and fast and could keep up with the A-Wings, but also at the same time allow the pilots to rest was an amazing thing for the Rebellion. Now, the Ghost is a little bit bulky for a starfighter, but when it needed to, it could keep up in a dogfight with the best starfighters out there, especially with Harris and Dula behind the sticks. 
Now, this was because, like most Corellian freighters, the VC-X100 had an unnecessarily high amount of thrust. In total, the Ghost had two main engines along with two secondary engines. The high thrust-to-weight ratio meant that it could outrun a TIE fighter in a straight line if necessary. The Ghost could also hit a maximum speed of around 1,025 kilometers per hour in atmosphere. In the hands of Harris and Dula, one of the best pilots in the entire rebellion, the Ghost was able to even chase down enemy fighters and destroy them. Whether the Ghost is attacking or defending, there are a lot of weapon emplacements on board to make sure that the crew survives any encounter. First, we have the forward-facing laser turret that sits below the cockpit of the ship. It can be operated by a gunner or, if needed, remotely by the pilot. The nose laser cannon was good for pursuing enemy ships along with ground supports. There was also another laser turret with 360-degree rotation at the top of the ship. This dorsal turret was mainly used for defensive purposes and it guarded the most vulnerable attack vectors that enemy fighters could use to attack the ghost. The dorsal gun could also be operated from the cockpit if necessary via astromech droid socket. While defensive turrets don't really do a good job at destroying enemy starfighters, what they do 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 is they do a great job at knocking enemy fighters off of their attack runs so that you can buy yourself some more time. When the Ghost is deployed in formation with the rest of Phoenix Squadron, Rebel ships can adopt the combat box-like tactical formation, which allows for overlapping fields of fire, which increases the effectiveness of defensive armaments. The Ghost also had proton torpedo launchers, which were more effective against larger ships like the Arkadon class light cruiser. So far, we haven't talked about any aftermarket parts. I mean, this is a Krillin ship after all, so where are the Ghost's uh, aftermarket parts? Well, Harris and Dula realized that the best prepared ships are the ones that the enemy don't even realize are there. And so the Ghost has no less than 87 illegal upgrades, which are all geared towards making the ship as stealthy as possible. For instance, every engine on the Ghost has energy dampeners, static jammers, and were baffled to decrease their heat and electronic signatures. The Ghost cell system basically allowed the small freighter to appear like background cosmic radiation or like a minor solar fluctuation. It was basically invisible to all scanners. Unfortunately, these rebels didn't have the money or the space on board to install an actual stealth generator which would render the ghost completely invisible to the naked eye. Because then it would be a ghost ship, kind of. Despite its small size, the VC-X100 actually had a shuttle. Officially known as the VC-X series auxiliary starfighter, the crew of the Ghost called their shuttle the Phantom. This 11 meter long ship was a lot more robust than your average escape pod. It had two large forward facing laser cannons along with one dorsal laser turret. When docked with the Ghost, the dorsal laser turret on the ship actually becomes an aft turret for the larger ship. Although the Phantom initially did not have a hyperdrive, a Mon Calamari shipbuilder would install one into this tiny shuttle. Since there is no nav computer on board, uh, the Phantom required an astromech to basically chart navigational jump points, but still, this was an incredibly useful away ship that allowed uh, you know, Spectre Cell to basically go on missions without endangering their main ship. Whether it's the ship's efficient layout or its surplus of laser cannons, the uh, Ghost is really designed for survival first and foremost. They've crammed a lot of stuff onto this tiny platform. When Senator Mon Mothma decided to escape the Empire and become the voice of the Rebellion, she escaped on the Ghost. When Thrawn's Imperial Navy had the Rebel base on Autolon completely blocked off and trapped, it was once again the Ghost that would punch through the Imperial lines and break the blockade. When the Rebels attempted to liberate Lothal, it was the ghost that appeared at the head of a space whale army. So this small light freighter has seen a lot more than you can imagine. I mean, it's been at every major battle, whether it's the Battle of Scarif or the battle against the Eternal Empire at the end of the, the sequel trilogy. So, you know, it's, it's one of the most iconic ships of the generation. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this ship. And also, Zach, let me know what your favorite ship is because I kind of want to know. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.